Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar in, of engineering, the School of Engineering Science and Chemistry, Biotechnology and Health from KTH. My name is Fernanda Rebelat. I'm in the second year of the Master's in Industrial Environmental Biotechnology and here with me I have Eva. I'm super happy to be here. My name is Eva Malmström. I'm a professor of coating technology here at KTH and I'm very much looking forward to discuss our school and our education programs with you Fernanda for the next 20 minutes. Yes. Well, today we're going to be doing a short presentation on KTH and the School of Environmental Sciences and Chemistry and Biotechnology and Health. So we're going to be talking about the masters that we offer in, K in KTH and the School of CBH. And after that, uh, we're going to have some breakout rooms where you are going to be able to meet our programming directors and as student ambassadors to ask all your doubts and uh, hopefully solve them. <laughs> So uh, here to start with the introduction about KTH, we have a little overview about uh, of their main campus. So here's the main campus of KTH. As you can see, it's very well connected to Stockholm. And KTH also has uh, uh, several other campuses that Ava is going to be talking a little bit more about today because we also have other master's programs in the other campuses. So we have a really beautiful campus area, don't you think? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we are fortunate because our school has uh, research and education on four campus areas. Uh, so on the left in this slide, we see the KTH campus, which is the main campus on the outskirts of, of Stockholm, very close to the city center. And then if we follow to the right, we see a snapshot from Alba Nova, which is the university location where we have uh, first of all, co-location together with Stockholm University, but that is where we have the majority of the biotechnology, biochemistry oriented education programs. But if we go to the right, uh, further to the right, we find uh, the Solna campus, which is located in the um, in the Science for Life laboratory, where also some of the bioeducations are located. And to the right most, we have, uh, sorry, I should also say that the Science for Life Laboratory is next door to the Karolinska University Hospital. And if we go to the right most location on this slide, we have the Flemings Bay campus, which where, where we also have some education programs and which is also very close to the Kar Karolinska University Hospital, but in Huddinge. So we have excellent campus facilities where we can host and welcome all our students too. So the research at our school is, they, they encompass very broad subject areas covering health aspects, synthesis of new materials, new development of energy solutions, and of course, the environment and environmental issues are always high on all our agendas. So the ranking figures is quite promising for KTH as a whole. We are ranked number 73 in the QS uh, worldwide ranking, and we are actually 23 in material science and 58 in chemical engineering. And I think that reflects also our research intense university operations, meaning that there is a close, uh, close collaboration between education and research throughout our university. So on this slide, we see uh, the UN sustainable, Sustainability Development Goals, and that is a really important component of all our operations at the university. So we continuously work with integrating the Sustainable Development Goals into our, our program activities. So top, typically, our programs identify three key goals and they work specifically to implement them within the unit, within the educational curriculum. So this sort of makes sure that we have a very strong anchoring between the sustainable development goals and the education curriculum. So our ambition is clear. We want to make sure that it's possible for our students to get a sustainability profile on their educational curriculum. And again, I think that that is reflected in the ranking list. So KTH is currently ranked number 41 among the universities worldwide in the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings that assess universities' performance against the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And in Europe, we are ranked number 14. And I think that that sort of justify, is justified by the fact that we have worked along these lines for many years now, 
and we are clearly uh, working close together with with the, the education programs targeting the sustainability development goals. So, Fernanda, has this been reflected by any means in your education here? Definitely. Uh, as a student here, I can see how KTH pushes us to the sustainability side. So, in all courses and all projects that we do, uh, the professors always talk about the environmental impact that we have. So, every single technique that we use, we always have to consider what is the environmental impact of that technique. Can we maybe use something else that is better for the environment and still have the same result? So uh, I, in my opinion, as a student, KTH pushes us to be very good researchers, very good professional, but also to be very good about taking care of the environment and considering that in all projects that we do here and definitely after here in our professional life as well. Mm -hmm. So you feel that you will be well prepared for a more sustainable world? Definitely, yeah. because here we learn how to think about sustainability and the sustainability issues within the projects. Mm -hmm. That's something that's quite a differential from KTH. Sounds really good, Fernanda. <laughs> that's what we're aiming for. Uh, and now we're going to be talking a little bit about the master's programs that we have here in the CBH school. So I'm going to start with biotechnology, which is my area. In KTH, we have two master's programs focused on biotechnology. So we have the medical biotechnology program and the industrial and environmental biotechnology program. So in medical biotechnology, as the name says, uh, we focus on using the biotechnological tools to develop uh, diagnostic tools and to improve human health. Uh, on the other hand, if we take a look into the name again of the industrial and bio environmental biotechnology program, which is my program, uh, we learn how to use biotechnology so in the industry to be able to produce uh, bioproducts and biofuels. And again, by the name, always remembering and focusing on the environment. And also as well, to how to uh, manage waste and how to use biotechnology uh, tools to deal with contamination issues. So again, the environmental focus is pretty big in all programs. So Fernanda, there are lots of biotechnology oriented education programs in the world. How come you ended up here? Uh, for me, the choice was very easy. I was comparing the uh, course curriculum between several schools and KTH had the strongest curriculum within like the, the range of subjects that I wanted to study. And not only that, but KTH, uh, when you compare other universities, you can clearly see that it has a very big focus on industry, uh, on, uh, I'm sorry, on international students. And that's really important because since the beginning, I felt safe that I would be well recepted here and uh, the university would be prepared to receive the international students. Sounds great, Fernanda. So, so this slide, we can see that there are a lot of different programs at the, offered by the CBH at KTH. And so it's really good that there will be breakout sessions at the end of this seminar to, to give more details. But if we look at this list of programs, the top one, the master program in chemical engineering for energy environment, they focus a diverse field of chemical engineering and they really want to put sustainability at top of the curriculum. So a lot of processes uh, from the production of biofuels to the purification of drinking water with a very strong focus on sustainable processing. And you already touched upon the biotechnology programs, but if we go to the second on the list, we have the industrial environmental biotechnology. And that the aim of that is to provide a very deep understanding on how to design and to operate state-of-the-art life science-based processes with respect to quality, sustainability, but also finance. So I think that's a little bit um, a little bit uh, new angle to it. Uh, the next one in the list is the master program in innovative technology for healthy living, which is a very state of the art program focusing on technical solutions for, for wellness and for active lifestyles. We move on to macromolecular materials uh, is a program where we have a very close connection between molecular structure and macromolecular and material properties. Uh, it is, if we look further down in the list, it is also a program called poly polymer technology. So in the, in the breakout session, there will be a joint session with macromolecular materials jointly with polymer technology because these programs are slightly uh, connected in the structure. 
In, bi in medical biotechnology, the aim is to provide a solid foundation for the development of sustainable biotechnological solutions and their use in healthcare, which also was what you were alluding to. In medical engineering, uh, it's a very broad and interdisciplinary field of medical engineering, but here it's about uh, using the limitations of the technology used in clinical and preclinical applications and to see how, how all these developments can pave the way for a, for a better quality of life. And then we move on to molecular science and engineering. And that the, the aim of that program is to provide in-depth knowledge, knowledge of molecular systems and advanced tools to, to study molecules. So there is a lot of emphasis on sustainability, uh, especially looking at energy and environment safety and innovation. If we move on to the, the master program in molecular techniques in life science, I think I dare to say that it's a very unique program. It's a joint program between KTH, Stockholm University and the Karolinska Institute uh, here in Stockholm. So in this program, you, you actually are prepared for a professional research career in life science. So it has a very strong focus on molecular techniques for disease therapies and diagnostic tools. And besides on that, you also have substantial training on data analysis uh, to handle uh, big data for the future. So this is a really unique program uh, specifically designed uh, at this uh, Stockholm Trio encompassing the three universities. And then we come to the Polymer Technology Program, which is very much a, a sibling program to the Macromolecular Material Program. So it's about developing future materials, uh, for examples, for use in advanced healthcare, energy production, green packaging, bio-based composites, or even surface coatings. And in this program, the students study at two universities. So if you're keen to learn more about that, listen in in the breakout room following this webinar. And then we come to the master's program in sports technology. It's an interdisciplinary collaboration between KTH and the Swedish School of Sports and Health Sciences. So there are two, the lead, combining the leading actors in their fields in sports and in technology or engineering. So this program aims at providing a unique understanding of the areas of sports science and engineering. A lot of interesting developments are rapidly coming out of that field of research. And the last but not least program on this list is the technology work and health program where there's a lot of focusing on uh, functional and well-designed work systems, organizations, and environment. And it's a lot about learning how to plan and design and analyze work environments from a sustainability as well as a performance perspective. So I think the, this list uh, is very, it covers a very broad area of different disciplines. Uh, and uh, I think you are all eager to learn more about the program and their develop and the directions. Yes, now you want me to continue with the research at our school. So we are indeed a large school. There are 850 people at the school, roughly, or quite many of which are PhD students. So there is a lot of PhD students in the school. Uh, so we have seven departments. So the first one is biomedical engineering and health systems. So this is a very technology uh, oriented uh, research uh, department, focusing on engineering and medicine in a broad sense, but also covering technical research on the importance to medical applications and healthcare in, in the widest meaning. So chemistry uh, is, uh, uh, a, a very um, molecularly oriented research department. They work a lot on important research pro problems with relevance for energy, materials, environment, and health, and tools to understand those. And then we come to the chemical engineering department, which as its name says that it's a lot related to engineering and and uh, processing related to env energy, environment, and pure chemical engineering for new processes. 
So it's about, it's about combining fundamental chemical knowledge with engineering in order to increase the in-depth understanding and to develop sustainable processes and products. The fiber and uh, polymer technology department is unique in its kind in most parts of the world since it's bridging uh, since it's bridging uh, native and synthetic polymers in the same uh, in the same, same research environment uh, covering all kinds of research topics from starting materials to completely new materials for energy and electronic applications for instance so gene technology focuses on genomics and high throughput biology, also focusing on mass spectrometry proteomics. And the Department of Industrial Biotechnology provides knowledge and education for societally relevant and sustainable biotechnological production of chemicals, fuels, materials, and pharmaceuticals, as well as looking to develop clean waters and, and clean environments. And Proton Science is a very large research entity at the, our school, uh, focusing on a large spectra of protein-related research, both fundamental as well as applied research. And uh, the research covers, for instance, protein engineering, basic cell biology, the molecular disease mechanisms, drug development, proteomics, and nanobiotechnology. There are a lot of interesting topics That's covered nice. by our research. So here we also have some more uh, at hand examples. On the left hand side, we see a smart shirt, a shirt that has the capacity to actually monitor how you're feeling while you're wearing that shirt. And the right hand side, we see a, an example of another research topic that aims to replace um, metal fixtures that you may need to apply after you have a broken bone. So here it's an alternative by making an adhesive composite that instead can fixate the bone, then you would not need to have a metal plate uh, after surgery, which is much more comfortable for the patient. And here is another example. We have two of our researchers here represented on the picture where, where they were pioneering the field of COVID-19 and how that could be detected. Or, or analyzed in the wastewater, which are now technologies that are very much used today and also unfortunately also very relevant today. <laughs> yes. So with this slide, we wanted to communicate that we have a very vivid startup activity around our research as well. So uh, as most students at KTH find, we have a very close collaboration between research at the department, but also with third third party collaborations together with companies. And on this uh, slide, we can see the strategic partnerships listed. And some of them are, I think, world renowned, like ABB and Hitachi Energy, for instance. That means that there are very strong collaborative links between KTH and these entities. And to the right hand side, we see the logotypes of some of the startup companies that has been founded in the ecosystem of KTH with very strong support from KTH in a way, innovation most of them. So for instance, the Renew Cell work a lot on how to make the use of pulp, cellulose pulp, more, more uh, sustainable into clothing. Uh, and Crowley Green, for instance, are looking to develop lignin, a biopolymer, for, for further material use. Uh, and you can see in the in the bottom box here that we are ranked very highly in the employability ranking uh, from the QS ranking list. And now to finalize our introduction, uh, you probably already know this, but KTH is present in uh, several uh, social media platforms. Uh, we also have our newsletter where we're going to be uh, receiving information about the admission process and and also uh, live in Stockholm as a student. So do subscribe to the newsletter. And uh, if you have any questions, you'd like to talk to some students, we have student ambassadors that are representative are representative of every single uh, master's in here in KTH. So in our KTH website, you can uh, just 
send in a form and you're going to be asking questions directly to the student ambassador. So feel free to ask any questions about uh, the process, the application process, or life in Stockholm changing, like moving from one country to the other. Uh, we're going to be very uh, happy to help you. And as a last reminder, on the 7th of December, we're going to have a webinar talking about uh, application insights and also some uh, a little Q&A with the most common questions that we get about the application process. Um, so make sure to register for that. And also in the link uh, below, you can see all the previous webinars that we had in case you missed some. So go check that out.